Students, this tutorial is going to show you an awesome site called PhotoP or Photopia. I sometimes call it that. But basically what this is, is a free online version of Photoshop, which is amazing. And we're going to be using this to create and illustrate and design your book for this project. So uh, I use this pretty much exclusively when I did my book on Jesse Owens, as I used it to uh, both trace and create some images for the book. So let's see how it works. Uh, we're going to start by going to a new project. And uh, here under new project, I don't necessarily need to give it a title right now, but I do need to do a couple of things here and you should do them too. First thing is we're going to create a, or we're going to change the DPI to 300. And then we're going to build our basic template that we're using in Canva which is gonna be 10 inches by 10 inches. Now when you type it in first, it will change it to like 0 0.03, but then just go back in and change it. So your uh, new project, whatever you do in Photo P, uh, should look like this, 10 inches by 10 inches with 300 DPI. The background you can leave white for now, I think that's helpful. I usually don't like to work on a blank background, I think it's too hard to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Create. And then it's going to create my canvas for me. Now, if you've worked in Photoshop before, this should look relatively familiar with some slight differences. If you've never worked in Photoshop before, a couple things to point out. Uh, number one, on the left-hand side are your tools. There's only a few that you will be using. Over here on the right are your layers. Now, these are going to be important, and you'll see why here in a minute or two. So first thing I want to do is unlock my background layer. If I double-click on that lock, then that lock goes away, and my background layer is now active. Uh, so let's say that we want to trace a picture of uh, somebody for our book. Let's say we uh, are making a book about Darth Vader. So we're going to go over here to Google and we're going to search Darth Vader. I'm going to find a really nice image of Darth Vader. Uh, I'm going to go to my tools. I'm going to remember to select a large image of Darth Vader uh, just because that's, I think, very helpful. And let's see, what do we want to trace? Oh my gosh, what do I want in my book? That looks pretty sweet. Uh, so hey, let's do this one. So uh, I don't need to save it, so I'm gonna right click on it and I'm going to copy the image and I'm gonna go back to my beautiful Photopea and I'm going to uh, paste that in. Okay, so when I do that, notice that that image now has its own layer and that's gonna be important. See how this is grayed out? That means this layer is selected. If I'm on my little arrow tool, then I can grab this picture and I can move it anywhere I want. If I'm selected on the background and I grab the arrow tool, the arrow, to, the arrow tool, uh, I'm actually just moving the background around. So whichever layer is selected is the one that you are editing. Very important to remember. Now, this image is a little small. I want to draw him so he kind of fills up my page. So I'm going to select that layer. And then I'm going to go up here to edit, and I'm going to go over here to transform, and then I'm going to select scale. And then I'm going to scale him up by grabbing the corners and holding down, uh, I'm holding down command, although I don't think that keeps it in perspective. So remember, when you are enlarging images, you always want to grab them from the corner, and uh, just be careful that you are not... Uh, skewing them too far uh, too far up or too far down, right? So we don't want to make him tall and skinny, uh, but we don't want to make him short and fat too. So we want to try to maintain that original integrity of that image. All right, so I've got him pretty much where I want him to be, and I'm going to hit uh, enter, and then that's going to lock in that size. So if I was going to be designing a page, this is kind of where I would want him. So now, very important, I'm going to go down here to the bottom because I want to trace over top of him and I'm ultimately going to delete this layer. So I'm going to trace over Darth Vader and then I'm going to delete this layer so only my trace remains. To do that, I'm going to click down here at the bottom on a new layer and a new layer is going to appear here on top of Darth Vader. That's another important thing to know. So we want whatever layer is on top is the layer that's like on top. Uh, if I click this eyeball, Darth Vader will go away. That's one thing I'm going to do to check my drawing. 
So I'm gonna trace around him and I'm gonna come over here to the brush tool, which is on the left-hand side back in our toolbar. I'm gonna select the brush tool. Now it's got the brush tool, it's got the pencil tool. Uh, I like to work with the brush tool because it gives me a little bit thicker lines, uh, but the pencil tool is totally fine too. I guess it's more about your preference and what you're designing. If it's something uh, small, like a small detail, the pencil tool I think would be better. But in my basic outline, I'm gonna use the brush tool. Now when I use the brush tool, it is gonna activate a couple of options up here. So I'm gonna click up here, and I'm gonna look at, well, what type of brush am I working with? Uh, but more importantly, what size is my brush? So if I come over here, and I just do a little tester line, that's gonna show me how thick my line is at 15. If I'm gonna trace something, I might go down to like five or six. I wanna make sure that my hardness is up at 100%. Uh, if not, you're going to get a, like a soft, fuzzy line. Um, and then I'm going to, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it at about five. Okay, so uh, now I've got my pen tool the size that I want to. Now I can always change that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in nice and tight. Okay, and I'm going to uh, just kind of pick a spot to start. So I'm going to click and hold, and I'm gonna just start tracing around Darth Vader. Now, PhotoP is an online platform, and there are ads that pop up, and there are some little glitchy moments that you get, uh, but for the most part, it runs pretty smooth. Uh, when I'm tracing, I don't like to outline too much at a time, because if I do make a mistake and I need to delete it, then I'm gonna be deleting a lot of work. So I try to go in little chunks. If I get to a dark part like this, um, there's a couple things we could do, right? So we could click on this layer and we could lower the transparency. Mess from transparency. All right, I don't know if I remember how to do that. Let's go to edit. Transform. So one thing we can do if we are working on a part that's really dark and you can't really see where your pen is, you can click on your image layer and then go up here to where it says opacity and drop down your opacity so that it's a little bit easier to see where you're tracing. Just make sure that you always click back on layer two or your drawing layer. Okay, so we might want to actually double click that and label that drawing so that we know to be on that layer and then I can go back here and I can continue my tracing because now I can see due to the fact that that opacity has been dropped down so that's a little helpful trick that you can use to help you better trace your elements of your image uh, Darth Vader probably wasn't the best choice because he's got a lot of stuff going on that's something else to keep in mind when you are tracing your elements, right? Like, do you have to trace everything? No, so select an image that you think is gonna work, right? You don't need to trace every little thing as long as you get the major parts of your image. I think you'll be okay. Um, but Darth, Darth, definitely Darth Vader has a lot going on here. So I'm just going to trace a couple more things really quick so we can start to see what it looks like. Now, as you're tracing, if you want to fill in with colors, you can do that, but you want to make sure that your lines are closed off, meaning that it's like a shape. So as I come around here, right, all of this is still one shape that I've been tracing. There's that little glitch. So I've got a glitch, I made a mistake on my trace, I'm gonna Command Z, 
and that's going to take away that last keystroke. And because I drew too much, I lost a lot. So that's why you don't want to draw in super big segments. You want to keep them kind of short so that if you do make a mistake and you have to go back, you don't lose too much of your content. And your traces don't have to be perfect. I mean, they should try to look their best and try to be smooth. Uh, but again, people aren't going to see the original image. They're just going to see what you drew over top of it. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It should look nice, but it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, that's definitely not perfect. So as I zoom back out, I can see that I've got some stuff done here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide Darth Vader, and I'm gonna take a look at what I've got so far, okay? And that's pretty much it in terms of like tracing. You just wanna take your time, you don't want to go in huge chunks, right? You don't have to get everything. You want to make sure that you close off your line. See how that line is not closed off? So if I were to try to fill that with color, um, I would have a hard time. It would The color would go everywhere, basically, on the picture. Okay, so that's the basics of tracing an image in Photopea. And uh, next tutorial will be, uh, well, how do I add colors and things like that?